Okay. Well, you know, as usual, let me just swing my microphone. As usual, one of the challenges with using the microscope is knowing what you're looking at exactly. Let me just bring it in focus here. Dirty, dirty microscope. And look at this. What? What is that? So what exactly am I looking at? Which part of it? Um, I think I can get it on camera here so you can kind of get an idea of the setup. Just give me one second here. In my old too crowded shop. Okay. Maybe I should have showed you this first. Just ignore the mess. So there it is under the microscope. And uh, you can see the, the way it's in there. Very hard to adjust. And uh, get it lined up. Plus, the uh, uh, objective lens will strike. If I, if I focus this down, don't mess up the focus here. There, see, it starts striking the. Let's start right there. Let's see what we got. What do we got? Focus upwards. And we got. Oh. Okay, so I think if you remember, these pieces of metal that are uh, make up the plates of the capacitor, uh, one of them you could see is bent upwards, like the front end of a toboggan. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at the toboggan front end here. It's funny how when you look at stuff really close, you realize it's not nice and neat and beautifully polished and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm going to try to move this. I can move it in this direction easily. Now I've got to move the actual piece here. This is going to get clumsy. Hold on, hold on. really awkward putting a object under a microscope like this. This is a slide viewing microscope like so many are. It's really not intent on looking at three-dimensional objects. Okay, I think that might get us somewhere. Let's take a look now. Sooner or later we'll hit the mark though. The question is when we know it. Okay, so what we're looking at now is the other end of the capacitor plate. And okay, this part up here, which is a little hard to show, we're kind of focusing, is the bent over arm that goes across and forms one of the plates. And down here, this part that's in focus now, is the terminal leaving. Something like that. So we're at the wrong end of this. We're at the wrong end of it. So we travel to the other end. And you know what? It's the white material. It's hard to tell it's a material. Yeah, it's hard, hard, hard to tell. You know what? They're this is not the, you know, even if I get this set up, we're not looking at the spot of interest. Okay, let me work on this off camera a little bit, because I think it's going to take a bit of time. Let's see if I can get the point of interest right on. Okay, I got it angled so that when we're looking, let's, if you imagine that piece of metal with the front bent up is a toboggan, then we're looking at the point where the bottom of the toboggan hits the snow which is the part where the dielectric should be starting, should be visible. Actually, we're looking above it right now. We're focused above it, so I'm going to focus down. I think something interesting is going to come into view here. Right there. Right there. Now we put it right dead 
its center. One of those little tree-like formations. Okay, Johnny, I see you with your hand up in the back of the class. Why don't you tell them what it is? So, I think what you're looking at are dendritic formations coming from uh, Mercury. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Mercury corrodes into a black material. A little further down, there's more of it. More of it, in fact, all those black things, ignoring the lens marks I've got on my scope. So I think, if it isn't, uh, what do they call it, silver mica disease, silver, right? Do I say mercury? I think I do that quite often with these. Silver. Silver, as you know, from looking at your silver spoons, uh, turns black. Uh, one of the corrosion products of silver, whatever it is. Look at that. Isn't that something? A little tiny one over there. Look at this big one. Yeah, is there any chance I can get a higher power onto that? Oh, we've seen enough. Okay, so this is what I've made it. I've been fighting with this whole time. Are these formations which, in the right position inside the capacitor, you know, where these two plates are not supposed to be in contact, can actually create a contact, a bridge over a gap, a tiny gap somewhere, maybe even a fault in the uh, dielectric, or maybe a hole in the dielectric, which wouldn't normally cause a short circuit, because the two metal plates are still spaced apart but would allow a place for, for this kind of stuff to grow. So there it is. That's really cool. Who says a $5 microscope can't help you out? Oh, there's some way down there. See in the top left. And I don't dare move the sample in the other direction here. I can go back and forth. I'm moving the whole uh, specimens uh, tray, if you like, uh, with a control on the microscope. But if I try to move this in the other direction, it's liable to jump a mile. Wow, that's really cool. I will make an attempt of putting a higher magnification on it, but I mean, we can see what it is. It, 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 I think the uh, diagnosis is 100% uh, silver mica disease. I, I guess the deal is the mica itself has the silver in it. Here, I'll let you watch me struggle as I try to get the other lens in place here. Now, oddly enough, the lower power lens is actually longer than this microscope. So we'll pick it up. Oh! Maybe that was the higher power lens. Don't worry, I, I sort of know what I'm doing. Don't, don't worry. This again might bump into the uh, coming down. Yeah, this is a low, this is better. This is a lower magnification. This is where I should have been. And now you can see the uh, how you can see what's there to be seen. It looks like it's right on the edge. You know what? That's the same stuff I could see in the regular camera shot right at the edge of the mica sheet, which looks rough, roughly hewn in here. And you can see some kind of corrosion effect maybe on the metal plate itself, that reddish, brownish colored material. Uh, don't believe you can clean this away and make this guy good again. Fantastic. Well, this is very reassuring that it just kind of destroyed this capacitor. You know what, I can take it apart carefully and try to get it under the scope in pieces so we can take another look at it. Uh, but if I just replace this, uh, bingo. And I will replace it with a regular discrete component. Uh, not this technique here, which is so popular. There, I just banged into the 
trespass and I see all kinds of funny debris out there. Oh, some of that might be on my lens. Cool. Really cool. Very, very cool. shop is a bit of a mess. I, I really have been dealing with some external personal matters that have made me cut short a, a lot of effort I would put into things. And I'm not going to. Now exactly why poking the primary side causes the secondary side to act up, clear away, come back, I don't know. The easiest way to fix this is just bend one of those plates right up to start with. Give me a second while I, I use the same camera for, on the microscope that I use uh, on my close-up camera there. i got to put that back on. Okay, let's do some eyeball training. Now we've seen it. We have seen it. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. It must have sounded pretty good. Um, we've seen it under the microscope. We know what it looks like uh, at that level of magnification. Here it is looking with your eye, more or less. Pretty good eye. You can see right under the toboggan lift, something, you know, now when I look at it and get the light right, really looks funny. That Clearly that's the dielectric sitting there. And you can see the black stuff on it there. Okay, let's just pry that up. I'm, I'm destroying this. I'm going to have to, that's the end of this little capacitor. It's shot anyway. Okay, I don't want to wreck the, uh, the, the sample here. I want to investigate this further. Ah, that's exactly what I didn't want to do. Okay, I can't do it under camera like this. It's, uh, too awkward a deal here. screwdriver. There we go. Okay, let's go back under the close-up camera. You can see a skid mark from my tool, that loopy thing, but look at the blackish material. And, you know, to me, it looks like the edge of the uh, mica sheet has been eaten back. Wow, we're going to get this uh, under the microscope for sure. Can I get that mica sheet off of there? Is it, is it just sitting or did they glue it? It. Uh, I'm just chipping it away here. Well, then what I'm going to try to do is uh, I'm going to try to get rid of those metal pieces entirely. I could probably just bend, break them. Now, I don't want to come up and slice against the uh, little coil connections or anything. So I'm sorry if this is not on camera. I can't look at the camera and what I'm doing at the same time. I'm going to pull it away. Booyah! break that piece off. There we go. Now, same for the other piece. 
space. Again, a very fragile lead wires. They can't take even the slightest poke. Well, I guess they can, but. Can't get under it here. Oh! bigger piece of mica than I thought. I was just prying back here and it turns out mica sheet is there. Oh, look at, <laughs> there's a whole huge piece of plastic. It runs the entire bottom here. On that sheet of plastic, whatever it is, is this material here that's gone berserk. I don't think I'm gonna get any more off. I think I'm gonna stop right there. But let's get this back under the microscope and see if we can see more of this. Okay, and let's see if I've got it lined up at all properly. Now, now I'm, we're looking at it on such an angle here. Let me show you again what's up. crowded shop here. So, can you imagine the angle we're looking at? We've got the plate kind of like this. And we're looking down on it. And I'm hoping to be able to, uh, using focus, scan down the surface, up and down. That's, that's my hope. That's my hope. It's all the way down here. I can't see it, but I'm looking. Here, I'll let you watch what's happening here. So that brownish stuff is part of the center uh, tube that the coils are wound on. If I come up, we should be focusing across. There it is. We're going across the, the dielectric material. And we'll move it down to the end we were looking at. And bear in mind, I kind of mashed this thing up a bit when I took it apart. And this is the end area. As I can tell, let's see if, let's see if any of those black trees are still visible. That one down there, that'd be at the top right of your screen. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? There's some. Right in there. Okay, let me just move along here. Move along, there's nothing to see. Okay, that's the far end of it. This part I've, I've separated the sheets and kind of mucked it up. Oh, I still see some of that black stuff. Pretty sure. Okay, I'm on the low power. I'm not sure what the magnification is here. 30, 40, something like that. I'd imagine that these formations are extremely fragile, so any flexing of this material. Oh, there. Okay, let me flip to the higher power lens now. There he is. And just move along. Once again, you can 
see how dirty my uh, lenses are. A little more in the central area. I can't see any of those black guys. That, that's got to be something right there. If I go up another uh, magnification, we won't see much of anything. My scope's just not good enough for that. Further down. Reposition the whole thing and see if we can look right down on it. Uh, fat chance on that, but I'm going to give it a go. Then we'll be done with the microscope. Okay, so now you can, you can see the uh, angle I've got it set at. We're look, we can't look straight down on it. Uh, I just I can't mechanically work that into the uh, microscope, but that's not too bad. I'm still going to use the focus the plane of uh, focus to scan across the surface of it. Here's what we see. It's only out of focus, but I'll bring it in now. Okay. So the, the thing that comes to my mind right away is there's a lot of black stuff on here. That's, that's the edge. And I believe I'm scanning the edge of the mica right there, the upper edge, if you like, based on the way the uh, sample is under the microscope. And then I scan downwards, oh, yeah, that's upwards. Huh. And all backwards. Well, that's the bottom. That's the, that's the lower area of whatever it is I'm looking at. Look at that. So there they are, right there. This is about well, midway in the capacitor. And also, see all in the focal plane, all the black stuff, all the way across. Look at it, it's everywhere. So you don't just have these large dendritic formations that are occurring uh, out in the open at the end of the mica. They're occurring under the plates, but they just can't grow as much. There. And you know, they're, they're little dots, they're not joined, but you know what? If I had a really high power microscope, you'd find even smaller dots. And in the end, what are they not joined by? They're not joined by two molecules, you know, two atoms, three atoms. Crazy stuff like that would have to be happening in here. And those are the locations where a little tiny pulse might upset the balance of things. The pulse coming from me touching the primary, causing a disturbance in the secondary, causing something to happen between these plates. Now, this capacitor, that, you know, that has to be the answer for the strange phenomenon. But you know, can there be any doubt that this is a, basically a piece of junk um, when it comes to being a capacitor? Let me try and move it along here. This is a little awkward. So I guess the deal is, you know, mica is a mineral, and it has mica is not pure. Mica has stuff in it. Probably a little bit of gold in here, and everything in here. This gold doesn't corrode. Silver does. Maybe silver is very common in mica. Um, I suppose that's got to be the truth. Then. There we are. We beat this to death. No question. These are bad. Are they cause? Are they the cause of the fading? I don't know. I'm going to replace it and find out. <laughs>